Today I really hope to be straightforward with you in that I want to talk about the moment that the unfaithful spouse hopefully has where they, they have this very sobering, very dark, heavy moment where they kind of say to themselves, man, what was I thinking? I also want to talk to you about understanding what's at stake in your recovery. Because I think every marriage, every relationship, every family that's, that's in crisis because of infidelity or addiction that has found your way here to this video blog can attest to the moment where the unfaithful spouse sits back and says, man, like what was I thinking? Because when you're in the middle of the affair and acting out, you don't really have these moments. I mean, you do, but you stuff them down. You don't, you're not attuned to it at all. But then when disclosure happens and everything comes out and there's this pain and the freshness and the hurt and the anger and you start to really come out of the fog and you start to digest the pain and the hurt that's in your spouse's or your partner's face and eyes and voice and, and letter form, there's this point where you say, man, I am jeopardizing my life, everything that we work so hard for, everything that has been normal and, and usual, I'm, I'm rolling the dice with that. And it's completely, you know, it shakes your mind and your, ha your heart and your soul when you realize, man, I, I can't believe I was so stupid. And then, from that moment, there's maybe some efforts to try and regroup or what have you, but if you're an unfaithful spouse, there's a, there's a point where you have to come to grips with the fact that if you allow this to become petty, if you allow yourself to be swallowed up in what I call the you first model, you're going to be stuck. You're going to be hanging over a cliff constantly. You're going to be embattled with your spouse or partner all the time because what you're saying is, well, you first. You know what? What about you? You have to talk about the issues. Let's talk about you and not having enough sex and treating me like a kid and always be disapproving and always being unhappy and never being satisfied and rejection and all these things. You're basically saying, well, you first, right? You own it. You own what you did. I wouldn't have ever done what I did if you didn't do what you did. And you know what? We, we need to talk about all these other marriage issues first, not the affair. The affair is just a symptom of a bigger problem and all these different things. I know it so well because I originally, early on, did that. When I say early on, a few months before I finally got the right help and got taken to the woodshed and realized I was doing it completely wrong. You see... It's incredibly easy. It's seductive. It's enticing for the unfaithful to be led into this moment of, well, aren't my feelings valid? Sure, we'll do recovery work on me, but what about her or what about him? And they need and they need. And here's what you're doing. You're saying you first. And you're, you're falling prey to one of the biggest traps in recovery, which is, allowing yourself to get petty and self-righteous and bitter and hanging on all of the reasons that you are justifying or minimizing your affair when in reality you're making a super huge mistake because all you're communicating to your betrayed spouse or partner is you're unsafe and that this is how it's going to be and that they can't trust you and they can't re-engage with you and they'll never be able to be vulnerable because you will use it against them. Can all my betrayed spouses agree with what I just said? I can speak so strongly about this model because I was the chieftain of doing this. I'll never forget, I complained so much to Rick about it. One day he said, man, that, those are good thoughts, but the problem is you're still fixate, fixated on Samantha. When are you going to stop fixating about her and her issues and focus on you? And it hurt. And I was mad about it for a good kind of few days. And then I 
really went on this journey of kind of exploration for a good week. I was reading, I was praying, I was studying, I was, I was going back to the basics of my faith, of the wounds that I had experienced both in my childhood and teenage years, and I began to see that I was making a mistake that absolutely would transfigure my recovery. Now, I know not all of you come from faith, and that's completely okay, but there's the scripture that says, do not judge lest you be judged, and first, take the log out of your own eye before you attempt to take the speck out of your brother's eye. It's the same for marriage. As long as you are focusing on the speck that is in your spouse or partner's eyes, you're missing the log that is in your own eye. Gandhi said, be the change that you wish to see in the world. Be the change that you wish to see in your marriage. Now, all of these sound great on little rocks on your desk or, you know, little tweets or Instagram posts, but here's the thing. As long as you continue to focus on your spouse's or partner's deficiencies or failings, you're going to be perceived as a justifier, as a minimizer. You're not going to be safe. As long as you revert to the you first model, you're going to remain blind. And another scripture that says, if the eye is full of darkness, your whole body is going to be full of darkness. As long as your eyes are jaded, the whole recovery process is going to be jaded. And that's where the recovery protocol and process that you adhere to is so vital because it hopefully is going to take the scales off your eyes and help you see things clearly. Because if you can start to see things clearly and objectively, you are free and vulnerable and malleable to be able to engage in the restoration process. I can attest that one of the biggest shifts, because I know the way you unfaithful spouses think. I get it. One of the biggest shifts was when I said, all I can do is work on me. And when I made that shift, it helped me see some things that I wasn't seeing. It helped me see my lack of compassion. It helped me see how I was sluggish in so much of my recovery methods that I was drifting away from the foundational pieces to my life and to what was now emerging into recovery. That paved the way for Samantha to be somewhat diffused and not have to be pointing a finger at me because I was seeing the things that I was refusing to see. And then she started to dissipate in her anger and maybe lashing out, and it was kind of like, you know, she would say, well, you were selfish. And there was a day where I said, I know, absolutely. And there was no, nothing else to fight about because I owned it. And she was like, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to live? I said, well, I've, I'm going to make these changes, and I've asked these people to help me, and here's the, kind of the plan that I really want to, you know, uh, involve. Do you see any other needs to, to, for that plan? I don't think so. And so there was no longer you first. It was no longer lashing out. There was a point where she eventually one day started to say, you know, you're owning a lot. I think I need to own some things. Now, before you rush to judgment, that doesn't mean that she had to own some things that caused the affair. No. I cheated because I cheated and I was dysfunctional and unhealthy. You've heard that a million times. She had to own some things about just the deficiency within the marriage, because she is not perfect, will never be perfect, and that's how growth happens. So don't fall prey to the you first model. Don't get caught up. There's too much at stake. There's too much in the balance for you to allow this to become a, a fight of self-righteousness, of you first. Don't allow the blindness to cost you even more than what you have already lost in this relationship. Now, I know it puts fear in your heart. What if my spouse doesn't change? Or what if my spouse doesn't 
I don't know, but I know that you can't control them, and I know that as long as you fixate on your spouse, it's going to delay your own healing and personal recovery.